Hi there, welcome to the second lesson of the Netamark Getting Started videos. My name is Chris and in this lesson you will learn how to build a simple network and how to run a load flow calculation. The standalone Netamark program has no own UI for graphically drawing network elements. If you want to build up your network graphically, you can use PSS SynCal. With SynCal, you can draw the networks as single line diagrams and then transfer the network model to Netamark. However, in this lesson, you will learn how to create networks with text input. This enables you to understand the structure of the text-based Netamark model and create large networks without the need of the program SynCal. So let's start with a small network with a slack connected to the bus N1. A transmission line L1 connects N1 with another bus N2 where we have a load. Let's also add some parameters. The slack should maintain the voltage 1 PU and the voltage angle 0 degrees. The load should consume the active power of 1 MW and reactive power of 0.5 MW. In order to know where to enter which data, I have split my screen to show the help on the right side and the text editor on the left. Let's start with a slack. Therefore, we have to enter some data in the feeder section. Here we define the branch name, the voltage, the short circuit power, the R to X ratio, the C factor, and the multiplication factor. After adding the feeder data, we still have to add the slack network element in order to associate it with the topology. Therefore, we look for the slack network element in the help. A slack is always identified with the letter S in the first column. In name 1, we enter the bus name the slack is connected to. And in name 3, we enter the branch name we already entered in the feeder section. Then we have to enter the aimed voltage in HZ1 and the voltage angle in HZ2. In the next step, we enter the line. Transmission lines are identified with the letter L in column 1. The from bus in name 1 and the to bus in name 2. Again, the name 3 is used for the branch name. In HZ1, we enter the line length. You can either enter relative values for R, X and C, then you have to enter the real line length. Or you enter absolute values and just enter the line length of 1. The latter one is sufficient for RMS simulations. In EMT simulations you have to consider the real line length. In the next step we enter the load. In our case we choose the V-type load, which means that during load flow the active and reactive power are kept constant. So we have to enter the identifier V in column 1 and the bus it is connected to in name 1. In name 3 we enter the branch name. In column 27 we enter the number 1 because we consider the load branch as a shunt branch. The active power is entered in HZ1 and the reactive power in HZ2. So now we are finished with this small and simple network. We have a slack on the right side which provides all the active and reactive power required to hold the voltage magnitude and angle constant. And we have a load connected to that slack by our transmission line. In order to see if we did everything correct, we can now try to run a load flow calculation. Therefore we choose the function load flow under the menu item calculate. Immediately after the load flow calculation, the table with the results is shown by the program. Load flow results are structured in two tables, the load flow node results and the load flow branch results table. The load flow node results table shows all the buses in the system with their related voltage and the solved voltage magnitude in PU and KV as well as the voltage angle. The load flow branch results table shows all branches including the active and reactive power flows. For example, here we can see what the slack has to produce in order to provide the power to the load including the losses. Here we actually see that the active power of the slack is below the power of the load. This could actually not be if we did everything correct. Because in order to consume 1 megawatt 
we would have to produce this 1 megawatt plus the transmission losses. Hence, in this case, we accidentally defined a negative load instead of a real consumer. So let's go back to the net file and correct our mistake. If we read the help carefully, we see that consumers have to be entered with negative sign and producers with positive sign. To correct this, let's just use the multiplication factor in HZ3. Now we can observe that we successfully created the network case we intended to. Just a few words regarding some UI functions of Netomark. If you close the table, you can always retrieve it by clicking on the table icon here. Another very useful feature is the network browser. It allows you to understand the topology of your network even if the networks become larger. It builds up a tree view of your network and lets you find neighboring elements and also jump to the place where it is defined in the text file. Additionally, it lets you find the load flow results in the results table. On the bottom of the UI, you will also find a message window. Here the program writes out logs, as in our case, but also error messages in case we made a mistake or the load flow could not solve. In this case, you see that the load flow has converged within five iterations. You can enter the load flow options under Menu, Calculate, Settings. When selecting load flow, you can see and adjust all the settings required for load flow solution. For example, you can enter the number of iterations here. You might have asked yourself why Netomark calculated not exactly what we have entered. For example, we entered that the load should consume 1 megawatt, but the result is 1.0004. The reason is that the default settings for the accuracy threshold is 0 0.001. Hence, Netomark considers this result as exact enough. If we enter here a very small value, we will see that the solution is more exact. However, also the number of iterations is higher. So let's play a little bit with the network data. Let's increase the consumption a little bit and raise the slack voltage magnitude. The results are immediately seen in the results table. As we can see, the line is still loaded below the search impedance because the receiving end voltage is still higher than the select voltage. Hence, let's increase the consumer once more. So let's increase the network model a little bit. Let's create another line from bus N2 to N3 and add a generator which produces 10 MW and keeps the voltage constant to 1 PU. Therefore, let's just copy the existing line and just exchange the from N2 bus. A generator node is usually defined as a PV node. This means the power and the voltage is kept constant. In Netomark, PV elements are defined as G types. Hence, we need to enter the letter G in column 1. The bus name in name 1 and the generator branch name in name 3. The aimed voltage magnitude belongs in the field HZ1 and the active power in field HZ3. Then we can define minimum and maximum reactive power and voltage magnitudes. After running the power flow, the new elements are immediately seen in the load flow results table. Now you have learned how to enter network data, including the network elements slack and feeder, lines, loads and generators. Feel free to play around a little bit more with these functions. You can also directly open the Netomark project we have just created in this lesson. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.